that will quench their thirst and they will never be thirsty again. So the thirst I feel and you feel today, inshallah, it's worth going through it. Because inshallah, it will allow us to enter this gate. And when the final fasting people have entered the gate, then it will be closed. This also is a time of the special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fasting people. It's a special time. And Allah azza in a hadith qudsi, meaning that he, Allah informed the Prophet to inform us. So it came through the mouth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi but it is not his words. It's direct inspiration, so it's called Hadith Qudsi. And in this Hadith, Allah Azza wa tells us, "Kullu amali ibni Adam lahu illa sawm, fa inna huli wa anhazi." Allah said, "All of the actions of people are for themselves, except for fasting. That is specially for me." And I will reward especially for it. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will reward in a special way, this is not like us. This is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so, great mercies abound during this time and in this month. And if we look at the concept of mercy, we say, Shahul Rahmah. It is the time of mercy. You will hear the word mercy being mentioned in, 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 at many places. Ar-Rahma itself, the word mercy itself, comes from the three Arabic letters, Ra, Ha, and Mi. <coughs> and these three letters are used in many different ways. It is one of the three that are used frequently in the book of Allah Azza wa As a matter of fact, of the great names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most frequently mentioned attributes of Allah are the ones that have Rahimah, that have these three letters inside of them, that is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Most frequently, these are the overwhelming attributes that we constantly say every time we read the Quran, every time we are involved in an action, we say, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. We don't say Bismillah al Jabbar al Muntaqim. We don't say the name of Allah, the, the, the powerful, the one who will, who will uh, take revenge. We don't say that. We say ar Rahman ar Rahim. That is the quality that we are reminded of constantly. And when you look at the word uh, Rahmah from its root, we see that it comes, one of the words taken from it uh, is Rahim. And the Rahim is the womb of the mother. The plural is Arham. And so the greatest mercy greatest love probably in our creation is the love of a mother for a child. The greatest mercy that Allah Azza wa Jal has given to the human being is the womb. The first nine months of our existence in this part of, of, of our, our life are spent within the womb of the mother. And so by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who gave us that home, and also through the mother herself because her condition will affect the womb. So we are living in this world. It is warm, it is dark, there's no lights. It's wet. We're living inside of this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the child that even though the mother may be in the cold, the child is still warm on the inside. 
Even though the mother may be in the desert, the child is born. And so the rahim, the womb, is a great mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And it begins that special relationship between the child and the mother. A relationship of mercy that begins right from the beginning of the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator of the heavens and the earth, in his relationship with us, is even greater than the mother. The same quality of mercy taken to the divine level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us as the womb is providing shelter, providing warmth, providing uh, nutrients, providing all that we need at that stage. Allah Azza wa Jal has created this universe, this planet, to give us those nutrients and the protection and what we need to live in this short period of time of transition. So it's a mercy, just levels of mercy. As the mother has mercy on the child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on all of the creation. So Allah describes Himself as Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. As the, the compassionate, the beneficent, the most merciful. And the ulama have shown us that when you break down this term and see the relationship of these two attributes in the Qur'an itself, we find that the attribute of Ar-Rahim is mercy for all of creation. So Allah has mercy on animals, on trees, on all of the creation by literally giving all of the creation water, sunlight, air, all of these things. This is a general mercy. A Rahman is a special mercy for the believers. That is a special mercy for those who recognize their Lord who attach themselves with their Lord, there is a special mercy. Within this mercy, Allah Azza wa Jal was given to the animals and the plants, many things, so many types of mercies. And if we look at the animals, for instance, in Canada, and this is a place where you really see the mercy because the birds who have basically returned now did not have to stay in Toronto and in Canada during the polar vortex. So when the ice storm came and covered everything, they were in the Bahamas, or they were in Florida. How did they get to Florida? How did the birds get to the Bahamas? Did they take the interstate highway? No. Instinct. It is instinct, something built inside of them, which guided them down to the warmer areas where they lived for that period of time, and then they were able to return here. And scientists have shown that birds will actually return to the same tree. How do they know to come back to the tree? Is it GPS? Did they Google it or Google Map? By the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instinct. It's instinct. It's something inside of them. Built-in mechanism, which gives them that ability to travel, to move, to, to, to benefit, and then to come back to the GTA when the sun is out and it's beautiful again. We unfortunately do not have that instinct. We have borders and passports and we have Canadian dollars and U.S. dollars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given animals in Canada the ability, those who can't make the flight, the ability to burrow in the ground, to dig a hole, and to burrow in the ground, and to stay in this protected area through the polar vortex, through the ice storm, they could stay in that area warm, their temperature lowers, their heartbeat lowers. How did that happen? 
by the power of Allah. So that is Rahm. That is Ar Rahim. Right? That is the mercy that Allah gave to the creatures to allow them to be able to do that. And then at the right time, they come to the surface and enjoy themselves in the GTA when the sun is out. For human beings, Allah has given us a test. We don't have some of the ins instinctual reactions of some of the creatures, but we do have a ruh. We have a soul. Something from the Creator breathed into us. We also have aql, intelligence, so that we can not only just function in life, but we can try to understand what is life? What is it for? What are we supposed to do? So that's something higher than the animals. But because of this creation that can be higher than the animals, or can be lower than the animals, there needed to be a special mercy. And Ar-Rahman Azzawajal, in His infinite mercy, has sent prophets and messengers to every nation and every tribe. Prophets came to China, prophets came to India, prophets came to Africa, Prophets came to Europe. Prophets came to the Americas. And the Middle East. Every nation and every tribe at one point in time received a message. And Allah told us, Surah Al-Naha, chapter of the week, وَلَقَدْ بَعَتْنَا فِي كُلِّ مُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَلَيْهُمْتُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِي بِالْتَعْبُودِ And verily we have sent to every nation a message that they would worship Allah and stay away from false gods, stay away from oppressors. So every nation received the message. And it's important for us as Muslims here in North America, especially in Canada, to recognize the mercy even sent here. Because just the other day, on the 1st, we celebrated Canada Day, July 1st, 1867. We celebrated this uh, time of this consolidation of the provinces here in Canada. But the reality of people living in the country, and that is important for Muslims never to forget, the reality of people living here in this country is that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent messengers to every nation. And so here amongst the native people, the first nation's people, were prophets and messengers. In line with the Quran, as it said, we have sent messengers to every nation, kulli ummah. Every nation has received the message. Recently, information came from the Grand Council of the Mi'kmaq Nation. This is the native people who are living in Newfoundland. They were the people to, 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 to meet some of the first European uh, conquistadors, the conquerors who came across Jacques Cartier. And they met him. And according to the Mi'kmaq nation, they have a strong belief in what they call Niskan. And the word they use, this can, comes out in their writings, in their oral traditions. They believe that Niskam, when they describe Niskam, they say that Niskam is the creator, all powerful, all knowing. He sees all things, he knows all things. It's like the beautiful 99 names of Allah. It's almost exactly like reading the 99 names of Allah. So it proves to us that at some point, in time, a prophet came amongst the people. The inspiration is still there. We still see the results of it. And so we celebrate this time of being here. And people lived amongst those nations, not since 1867, 
for over 10,000 years, some say close to between 10 and 20,000 years living in this country. <coughs> and when they described a large village in the Iroquois language and other First Nations language, they would say the word Kanata, Kanata, which meant to them a large village, Kanata. We now uh, are celebrating and continuing the term, changing Kanata to Canada. We changed the word and we confederated Nova Scotia, the province of New Brunswick, and the provinces of, of Canada, which at that time was only Ontario and Quebec. Only those were consolidated in 1867. And what was the role of Muslims? At that time, they recognized, they wrote in their books, that there were Muslims in Ontario, Mohammedans they called them. And when the people went on the wagon trains and went into the other parts of Canada and settled in other parts of Canada, Muslims were with them. And so the oldest masjid in our lands is Al Rashid Mosque in Edmonton, Alberta. And this was built by the descendants of, from the Ottoman Empire, Syrian, Lebanese, Turkish, Albanian, Bosnian, who crossed into the Midwest, suffering and struggling as part of this country. So we should never forget that, that prophets and messengers have come to these lands. And that is, in Salah Rusul, in sending the messengers the greatest mercy to us because on the lips of the messengers, from the hearts of the messengers came the books. And the final testament of Quran came through our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <coughs> the last testament to humanity. This is the ultimate mercy. Here we are people whose instinct is okay, but it's not like the animals. So we need a little help. We need some help to get our spiritual side together. The animal spiritual side is together. You see in the morning the birds, and you see the animals, they're all making salat. As the Quran says, all animals do tasbih. They all say subhanallah in their own way. But you don't know how they do it. We are the ones who have the problem. Some of us say tasbih, and some of us do the opposite. So we needed help. So the prophets came to the different nations first. And finally, to the last nation, which is humanity. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did not come to the Arabs. He did not come only to the Arabian Peninsula, but to all of humanity and the jinn, and creatures of smokeless fire. He came to all, bringing the final testament. And in this testament, in the second chapter, verse 183, Allah Azza wa Jalla has told us, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان that the month of Ramadan is the time in which the Quran was revealed guidance to humanity and a clear evidence of the guidance and also the forqan the criterion to separate truth from error. And so the ultimate verse, the revealing of the final text, and these words that we read in Salat al-Tarawih, as we go through them, we should realize every letter is a verse. <coughs> every letter is a verse to all of humanity. In the clear Arabic language, that could be understood and memorized even by people who do not speak Arabic. Who Arabic is not their mother tongue. Able to memorize this text and to hold it in their hearts and to deliver it back to humanity. 
So in this mercy is guidance, Yadaya. Guidance is here. We are so much in need of guidance today. Which direction do you go? The Muslim nation right now is in need of guidance. And we are in need of bayinat. That's the next part of the person. Clear evidence. So whatever happens in front of you, the things that you see on a local level, international level, look for the evidence. Look for clear evidence. Don't just look at what people say, but look at what they do. Because the final result of what a person claims, or what a person says, is what they actually put into practice with their lips. Even their faith itself, that we have learned, is al qawmu bil lisan wa tasdeeq bil qawm wa al-amr bil jawari. That faith itself, you say it with your tongue, you say you believe in Allah, and then you confirm it in your heart, and then practice it with your lips. And so the complete, or the completion, that gives us the clear evidence. The Qur'an itself is the only book which is completely true, that we can completely depend upon. A hundred percent. Kalamullah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came down to us and that we are able to read and able to uh, take knowledge from and guidance from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, that in this month and through this book is al furqan which is the separator of truth from falsehood. And that is so important to us in the situation we are in today in the world. Ramadan is a mercy. It's shah of rahmah. It's a mercy. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, even spiritually, Sufi that the shayateen, that the evil jinn, and remember there is human beings, al-ins, and there is also jinn. The singular is jinni. Creations made of smokeless fire, who live in a parallel world. In a parallel world, normally does not make contact with us. But sometimes does. And the jinn are good and evil. And from amongst the evil jinn, there are those who lay in watch around us, spreading waswisa, confusion, and lies will come to us. We hear all types of things. But in this month, it's a mercy. This is a mercy. The shayateen are locked up. Shayateen are locked up. They cannot reach us. So if you hear something in your head, you got a problem. You got a problem. The shayateen are locked up. It is also a great blessing. This month is also a great blessing. There is a special night in it that is khayran min al shaha. It is better than a thousand months. Imagine that. No other nation amongst no other prophet ever received anything like this. That there would be a time that the followers could gain the blessings of a thousand months in one night. That also exists within this month. Great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, we find that the month of Ramadan not only is a mercy for us in this life, but the Prophet has informed us in the next life it will be a mercy. The fasting in Ramadan, it will continue to be a mercy. And in authentic hadith, the Prophet has informed us fasting and the Quran will intercede on the day of resurrection. And fasting will say, Oh my Lord, I prevented him
from food and desires. So accept my intercession for him. And the Quran will say, I prevented him from sleep at night. So accept my intercession, Shafa. Accept my intercession. This is crucial on the day of resurrection. Because when we are on the Mecca, when we are standing in front of Allah, what appears to be thousands of years, we're standing there suffering and we need some intercession. This is the time when fasting in this month will intercede for you and me, inshallah. And the hadith ends and says, after this, after the Quran has spoken, given the ability to speak, their intercession, the intercession of fasting and the Quran will be accepted. It will be accepted. So this time that we are spending is not in vain. The dryness of the mouth, feeling tired, feeling hungry, it's not in vain. It's Allah's mercy on us. And one day, inshallah, we will see that person. But aside from this, aside from looking at our nation or even the Day of Judgment, even on a personal level, on a personal level for all of us, this fasting, it's a mercy. And no matter what level of fasting we are involved in, the fasting by, by the very nature of staying away from food and drink and desires during the daylight hours is a mercy on a human being. In the basic fast, Sormul Awam, and we have learned over the years that Sormul Awam is the basic fast of the masses of the people. That is the people, that is the fast where it is basically a struggle for food and drink. So the main issue, and that's still the main issue for us, we're going through the seventh day and whatever, the main issue is iftar. That is the struggle. When is the iftar? Look at your watches. It's coming close now. That is the struggle. That's so Allah. And you'll see in many countries, I remember living in another country, I won't say which one it is, but going into the marketplace and then I went to the butcher and the butcher had a big smile on his face. He was really happy and he said, it's, it's Ramadan. And I said, why are you so happy? He said, because I will sell more meat on this month than I will sell for the rest of the year. I said, how is this possible? I thought this was a Shah al right? not Shah al right? I thought it was the, the, the month of fasting, not the month of food. But the hunger inside the human being, right? That's that's the side of us, right? We have the side, like the animals have. We need food to survive. We need drink to survive. We procreate, we have families to survive, otherwise we'd all die. So it's a natural drive or desire. The fasting controls your desire. It controls the desire. It says you can't eat and you can't drink until sunset. Could you imagine if a, if a proclamation was made in Canada, not by the mayor, by the way, because he has other problems. If a proclamation was made in Toronto, and they said for this month, the next 29 or 30 days, I'm sorry, people of Toronto, you cannot eat and drink uh, all day from dawn until sunset. This is an official proclamation made by the government of, uh, uh, of, of Ontario that you cannot eat and drink anything during this time. Nothing. You can't even touch a liquid. You can't eat anything. You know what would happen? There would be a major revolution. The people would pour into the streets, burn down the city hall, destroy the government. Why? Because hunger. Hunger, desire, that same desire is in us. But look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through this month, 
we learn to control the desire. We can control it. How many people could do that? That's an amazing feat. It makes us different type of people. So in the future, well, if we ever get in a situation where there's not enough food, where somebody else is starving and you have food, or somebody else needs something to drink, if you have drink, then we have the ability to give it to somebody else and not take it ourselves. We can turn off the desire. That is a mercy. That is a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the highest, higher level, the level of Soma Tawas, which is a higher level of fasting, that is where the, a person is doing the, more of the complete fast. It's not just hunger and thirst, but their eyes are fasting. Their ears are fasting. Their hands are fasting. Their feet are fasting. That's a higher level of the fast. Ramadan is a mercy. How is it a mercy? Our eyes are fasting, which means that if we are doing the real Islamic fast and we see something haram, then we lower our gaze. We turn it off. And that is a great mercy, especially in the summer season, because now the corruption and nakedness and adultery and fornication and murder, it has reached an extreme level. And not only is it on a screen, a movie screen, it popped up on our handheld device. It's popping up everywhere. But in this month, if we are really fasting properly, we turn that off. We don't look at that. The eye is supposed to be fasting. So you don't look at it. You lower the gaze. You come out of that. That is a mercy. Because how long could we last? Think about it. How long could we last in our normal state? Right during the normal year, with the wasbiso and with the lights and the sounds and everything coming with our handheld device, then we look at it. And we stay for a little bit and we look at it again. But this month is a mercy. Because it strengthens our eyes. So we can resist. Our ears are fasting. Which means that also the ears are fasting. And we should not be listening to things prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so those forms, those negative forms, those negative sounds of music that has swear, swearing and carrying on and all types of things that are coming in, if a person is really fasting, they don't listen to it. So that's a mercy. It's a mercy to that human being that during that time they cut it off. And by cutting it off, then think about it, you get a chance to realize how evil some of that really is. So we don't listen to it. The tongue is also fasting. And the tongue is not just fasting from food and drink, but fasting from lying. If you're really fasting in Ramadan, don't tell lies. You shouldn't be telling lies. You think you're a fasting person. Don't scandalize anybody. You really fasting in this month? Then we should only say the good things about each other. And don't scandalize other individuals. So the tongue needs to be fasting as well. On all different levels. And that is a mercy. Those of you younger generation, is older generation too, right? Swear. Bad word. Stop swearing. How can you be fasting and cursing? But it's become a culture. Become a culture. So in Ramadan, if we are really fasting, then our tongue should be fasting as well. Clean up the tongue. Clean it up so our language is a clean language. And instead of those uh, swear words, right, then we should have tasbih. He's playing the soccer game or playing the basketball game, and he comes near the goal, and he's ready to kick it, and 
need to get rid of the ball goes in and it looks like it's a goal and the Germans are going to lose and it hits the pole. And what does he do? He swears. He swears because he missed the shot. Don't swear, Shazaya Slav for the law. Substitute the swear, right, for something good. And so if we want to do something, inshallah. Inshallah. Bismillah, the name of Allah, we do actions. If something is good, mashallah. If you see something evil, a'udhu with that. Keep the dhikr on the tongue constantly. Say it as much as we possibly can. And one important uh, type of response, which I recently realized again from reading the literature, that the Prophet ﷺ, when he was really confronted with evil things, I mean something really evil, right? Like when the messengers came from Musaylimah, from the liar prophet, and when they came to him from the liar prophet and said they're coming from the messenger of Allah to him. First thing he said, as he said, whenever he saw really evil things, he said, Amen to Billah. Amen to Billah wa Rasulullah. I believe in Allah and his messenger. So if you're really confronted by something evil, right, your response, Amen to Billah wa Rasulullah. Confirm it to that shaitan that's there. That we believe in Allah. And so the eyes fasting, the ears fasting, the hands, lower the price. If you got a shop, lower your price. You can still make a profit, but lower the price. Those who are selling Islamic goods, don't raise the price of dates. Why are dates so expensive in Ramadan? The date should be cheaper, right? Lower the price of the dates. Hands should be fasting. Feet fasting. Feet cannot take you into anything evil there around. So Ramadan is a great mercy on humanity. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet said, the day will come when a door is open on the day of resurrection. And fasting people will enter the Babu Raya. When they enter it, when the final fasting person has entered, it will be closed. It will never be opened again. And they, when they get inside, they will drink and they will never be thirsty again. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless everybody here today to be able to enter into Baba Raya. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless all of us to be able to drink from the river of Kalfa. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have mercy on the children of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu I pray that Allah would have mercy and protect the women of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu I pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would have mercy and protect and guide the men of this Ummah. May Allah have mercy on us, protect our weak, and forgive those who have passed in your hearts. Aqulukum ihaba wa astaghfirullahi wa barakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakum.